Hello everybody and welcome to my first real non-trial campaign of Rogue Tech. Now I've been playing this for a while under the trial moniker, but I'm feeling confident enough to just throw caution to the wind and just dive into a proper campaign, which means no restarting if we fail. It means that we are going to be actually following a few different rules. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, let's create ourselves a new career. Now, we're going to leave this largely the same. Uh, we are going to be a mercenary company. Friendly fire, yes on all. Mech recovery chance, 50%. Contract difficulty variance. Salvage normal, yet yeah, this is all fine. We're going to leave this pretty much at default, except... There might be a couple of things that I want to change here. Specifically... Scrap return values? I mean, yeah, that's fine. I want to leave pretty much everything here at default. Uh, yeah. Actually, this is completely fine. Let's go ahead and start the game. I don't think we need to change anything whatsoever there. Now, in terms of what faction we're going to be joining, I've given it a lot of thought and come to no conclusion. So we are going to let RNG decide for us in the uh, spirit of the word rogue tech, as in roguelike. We're just going to let procedural generation figure that out for us. So that should be interesting. Now, you'll note that this is entitled Treadnought. I am intending for this campaign to last for a while at i i don't know how long treadnought is going to be a thing because this is only the second major patch of rogue tech that i have played so i don't know how long the treadnought patch is supposed to remain as is but we're going to play for quite a while and it will be exclusively on treadnought if we move off of treadnought then i may end the series at that point or I may remain on Treadnought. It kind of depends. Now, in terms of what goals we have for this, let's wait and see what we get for our faction. If I can stop punching my pop guard. There we go. Excellent. I was hoping this would have been loaded by now. But uh, good thing we only have to do this once. I always forget how long it takes to do this. <laughs> Probably should have done this off camera with the loading, but oh well. It's uh, about to get there, looks like. Come on, I want to know. I want to know what we're doing. So in terms of the choice, I think we're going to go with our origin location for who we're going to align with. I also want to completely overhaul how we are doing mech warriors and mechs and the specking thereof. So that is something that we will be going over. We are going Federated Sons. Okay. That seems fine. Our interests are, and I'm going to leave these all exactly the same. It's all RNG. So we, we've always been a gambler that gives us jinxed and lucky. Okay. Uh, there's no tooltip for that, so we'll have to investigate that a little bit later. Our mech quirk is a random hunchback, and we are reckless and drunk. Someone always needs some work done. We chose the career of freelancer. This is apparently who we are. Tarbox, Carrie Peterson, with some truly mediocre stats. That's okay, we do get, I believe, 3,500 starting XP. Once again, we're leaving that all exactly as it is from RNG. So if we're going Davian, that means that we are not going to be going for the Steiner Scout Lance, which is something I was kind of hoping for. But no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on like stereotypical Mimi Steiner loadout, or not Steiner loadouts, Davian loadouts. Steiner loadouts are super easy to meme, but let's take a look at what we are starting with here. So we've got ourselves a Vulcan. This is an XL Engine Core 240. It's got a Flamer Ultra AC5. That's not terrible. It's got Mask. Uh, that tends to fail. It's like a 50% chance of failure on activation. We've got a Raven. That's a pretty good starting mech. XL210. 
Small pulse laser, dual small laser, LRM-15 FTL missiles. And it's got a NARC beacon on it. Okay. It's got a comm suite. Does this variant of Raven not have ECM? I don't see an ECM on here. Okay, noted. We've got a Panther. Wait, when don't we have a Panther? SRM-4 PPC standard Panther loadout. It does have case. That's nice. Okay. We've got an Assassin. And this guy is... Actually, he's got halfway decent hard points. Engine core 280. LRM-5. I'm probably... an SRM-2? Okay. We're going to run a mission or two with them in their stock configuration, but... I'm willing to bet that this guy... Ooh, I don't like this armor setup. I'm willing to bet that this guy here is going to be swapped out into being either MRM or Streak SRMs, if we can. We've also got a Javelin. Okay. Engine Core 180, SRM 6, Dual. Sure. Okay. Well, that's a decent start. We've got 2.5 million C bills, of course. Let's hop into our engineering and get an upgrade going immediately. That is definitely something that I want to do. We are not going to be getting a junkyard leopard immediately. <laughs> we are going to go for repair scaffolding first. It'll take a bit, but we'll get it done. Because our repair times are going to be long at this stage. Let's check in on our mech warriors, shall we? We've got... Some pretty good ones, actually. Okay, so let's just get ourselves up to somewhere like that. That'll be fine. Synapse, we can grab a couple of... I mean, I, I kind of want to take everybody up to 444. Or 4444, rather. As I usually like to do before we start specializing. That said... We're going to need to... Let's see, these are... Do we have any vehicle only? No, we have a couple of mech only pilots, but most of our pilots are mech and vehicle. Sounds good. Mech warrior training complete. Good to go. Okay, so before we start specializing them, we should figure out who gets each mech. So that's going to be a thing. This is one thing that I want to do. Is that I want to have these guys assigned to a particular mech. Now, we can't customize these guys because they're all Kickstarter backers, which is actually a little bit unfortunate for us. Because I was hoping to name them so that I can keep this straight. But let's take a look at their... Do, do any of them have any quirks currently? Let's see. Davian Ancestry, Drunk... Yeah, I wanted to check this. Plus 5% stability taken, avoids panic eject, and plus 1 OP accuracy. For jinxed, plus 1 evasion gained, and max minus 1 defense. For lucky, plus 2 clustering. That's pretty good. And reckless, evasion ignore, and max evasion. Fine. Okay. So we should probably think about who we want piloting what. So the clustering increase is great for a missile brawler or or an LRM boat pilot. But since this is the player character, we're better off getting in close. And so we should probably be a missile brawler. That said, oh, actually, we can just hover over this. This is way easier. Plus one mech tech reduces cost and upkeep for mech bay. OK, sure, sure, sure. A bit of clustering there. Actually, this guy would be a very, very good missile brawler. Okay. This one... Mm, kind of mediocre. This one is lucky and... That's kind of it. As far as Falcon goes, we've got some clustering. Okay. Lord Daki. He is very mediocre. <laughs> okay. Very mediocre and very mediocre. 
Sounds good. So Aryamaki should obviously be in our in our assassin. For getting in close and getting those SRM brawls. Now the LRM is awkward for that. For now, we may actually want to have him in the javelin, which which does mean that we're going to want to be in the javelin overall. Let's just go ahead and start working on this. Okay, so we want to align Davian. This is spooky here. Where are we? Let's take a look at our navigation. Hello, Commander. Yes, I know how that works. We're in outreach. Okay, fair enough. So we may want to take a travel contract to somewhere a little lower level right now. That said, I, I don't know. We, we've got those stock mechs. Let's see if there's a halfway decent travel contract. That's a negative. Well, there's this one. It's against the Federated Suns. But that should be okay. A skull and a half. I think we can handle skull and a half. I hope. Double salvage? Double salvage. Calculating course now. Let's go. Oh, okay. We got a hunchback from the commander gear. I think, anyway. Yes, indeed. That's a 4P. That's going to run pretty hot, but should be okay. Let's take a look at that, actually. Yeah. That's running a stock 4P? Yeah, that's just a million medium lasers. Okay. That looks good. So that'll be our mech. The clustering isn't necessarily going to help us too much. Actually, it might. Does clustering work on laser weapons? I don't know. Maybe. Well, we're going to have our repair scaffold done right now. Those upgrades you asked for are online. Excellent. And let's just go ahead and grab improved power conduits next. Get started on that one. And we'll arrive at our destination soon enough. This will be well before the financial report, I hope. But honestly, I don't think we should worry about skull and a half missions with our current weight level. Yeah, I know flashpoints. That's fine. With our current weight level, I'm not too concerned about it. I am slightly concerned about how good these stock builds are going to be because they're they're not. They're not going to be good. <laughs> I can say that right now. Uh, why can... Oh, we still have an upgrade in progress, technically? Oh, we do. Okay. Now we can get another upgrade going. Okay, so we're going to grab perhaps this repair and refit. Mm. Yeah, we're going to grab this repair and refit. Excellent. We're going to have the financial report pretty soon. Yes, we are ready to proceed with this contract. Oh, hello. We have a J. Edgar. I didn't even check our vehicles. I should have checked our vehicles. Can we deploy? We can deploy vehicles. Okay, so who do we want to be our vehicle pilot? How about Scrub? Scrub seems like a vehicle pilot. Okay, we're going to be bringing the Hunchback. We're going to bring the Assassin. We're going to bring the Vulcan. And I think we're going to bring the Raven. The Panther and the Javelin, we're going to hold as backups. We are eventually going to have one mech slash vehicle per mech warrior is going to be how we're going to do this. Now, we're going to pilot the Hunchback ourselves. The Assassin should be piloted by Ariyamaki because of his uh, Gladiator and Lucky. The Vulcan... Who do we want to pilot the Vulcan? Let's have... It, it kind of doesn't matter, I don't think. All of these are kind of samey in terms of their stats. Minus one recoil. I mean, the Vulcan has an ultra AC5. So I guess we'll put Corsair in the Vulcan. And then we'll put the Duke over here into the Raven, perhaps. 
Jam chance reduction. Do we have anybody who is particularly good at piloting the Raven? The answer to that is no. No, we do not. I guess we'll just choose this guy for now. Okay. So this is a Flamer J. Edgar. Noted. Looks like it might require more firepower than that. Yeah, I know. We should honestly be okay. I wasn't even expecting to be able to deploy the J. Edgar. And I did not attempt to put the other mech in the other slot there. Maybe I should have, but I'm pretty sure that's a vehicle only. Yeah, we'll try it next time. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm just assuming it's a vehicle only. I should have checked. I absolutely should have. That is my own fault. Well, what do we have here, Darius? We need to mark the military base for destruction from orbit. We're engaged in delicate negotiations with a private manufacturer from Davian Space, but we've reached an impasse. A representative has requested a demonstration. Something dramatic. So we turn to you. Your team will provide on-site assistance to target an abandoned Davian military base near the Trade Conference. We'll have a warship standing by to light it up. Dramatically. The time frame on this is tight, since we need the artillery strike to hit while the Capellan representative has everyone looking in the right direction. And Commander? I wouldn't take any, any bets on that military base actually being abandoned. Yeah, I didn't look at the fact that it was target acquisition, but that'll be okay. We're going to want to get out of here quickly enough. So, I doubt we can deploy here. Yeah, absolutely not. I'm not surprised by that. We may be able to squeeze in a deployment over here, though. And indeed we can. Do we have any allies? I don't believe we do. We can defeat the enemy air defense, allowing employer reinforcements to land. So, we have Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie here. Noted. The question is, do we want to go after these two simultaneously and then come up here? Maybe. Where is the enemy air defense? Right there, apparently. Okay. Yep. We're just going to move up with the Hunchy for now. Got it. And the Assassin can move up to here. The Vulcan up to here. What do we see? We see a commando, we see a light turret, we see a savannah master, we see an anti-aircraft generator. Not too bad. How much HP does that anti-aircraft generator have? 100. Okay. We're just going to position over here with our J. Edgar. Okay. So the Vulcan with the AC-5 is going to position right up here. That did give us eyes on another light turret and an Ignis. But I absolutely want to hit this anti-aircraft generator. If we hit with all three of these, we will destroy it. We did not. Okay. We're going to move up with the Raven. Oh, there's a turret over here as well. Noted. There we go. Oh, that killed all the turrets, too. Fantastic. So that will allow reinforcements to land. The assassin is going to move up over here to place a targeting beacon. There's a commando right there. And let's see, we've got the LRM-5. Eh, I do not like that loadout. Attention! All Davian forces focus fire on the mechs placing beacons for artillery strike. Fire at will and bring them down. Yeah, they can try, but we just took out all of their turrets, so they're unlikely to take out the assassin right now. Now, we could go for the commando here, or we could go for the vehicle, the Savannah Master. And I'm actually thinking the Savannah Master is the correct target here, just because its armor is so weak. We could theoretically kill it. With this salvo, I don't think it's going to happen, but we can we, we can give it a go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think we'd get much. Their commando backs off, fires on the assassin. No surprise there. Although, 
critical hit. That's what I was talking about with the armor levels. Already exposing that that torso with four evasion pips. <laughs> okay. Receiving well, you. this is one of the reasons why we want to make sure that we uh, get these mechs properly outfitted in the next little while. We're going to go ahead and re rear attack this commando. This is a flamer boat, so it's not going to do too much. We did break the armor, though. So there's that. What do you need? The Hunchy can just get up over here. And the Hunchy is actually theoretically also capable of killing the Savannah Master. That went about as expected, if I'm honest. Okay, they're going to attack the Hunchy. I am 1000% okay with that. Savannah Master then backs off. The Ignis moves up. Does not attack anything. Commander, they're deploying vehicles and tanks from their motor pool. It appears to be subterranean and hardened. We can't take it out. They'll keep coming until the artillery lands. So move quickly. That was the plan. Good to go. The Vulcan is going to make its way over this way. Or... We could come here and jump next turn. Or, even better, we could go here. That was exciting. Okay, so we do see over here that they deployed a hunter and another vehicle. We're going to fire rear arc on this commando, hope to get a couple lucky hits. We did get a couple lucky hits there, actually. Reporting critical hit. That was a very nice hit there. We're going to move up with the Raven. The Raven does not have jump jets. I'd like to maybe take out this vehicle. That would be ideal, but we're probably not going to hit it, honestly. We could go for the Savannah Master. We're not going to kill it, but we'll just take a pot shot here. These stock loadouts are not great. No hits there. 27% chance. Okay. Fair enough. They've got an ECM. Noted. Yeah. Our Hunchy is going to move up and start making them slightly, slightly scared. I hope. What are our hit odds on that Mantis? Halfway decent, actually. Ah, we only hit the one laser. Okay, that's fine. They're going to continue firing on that Assassin, and oof. I mean, I didn't like the LRM-5, but... Wow, he didn't even move. Standing okay. Fine. Well, our our goal here is simply to sprint over this way. Now, this is our right torso. I would actually prefer if we were able to expose our left torso more to them. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be an option. So I think we're just going to come up over like this. And maybe even expose rear arc. Uh, no, we're not going to expose rear arc. Quick question. Maybe we go around this way. Roger. That is indeed what we do. Okay. The scorpion is going to fire on the raven. That did a lot too. We need to get these mechs properly out outfitted. <laughs> They're focusing the raven currently. That's okay. We're going to back off the Raven in a moment. What's up, boss? The J. Edgar is going to stay exactly where it is. We're going to look to kill this commando. Affirmative. We did not kill the commando. They're firing on the Hunji. That is not relevant. They're continuing to fire on the Hunchy. It continues to not be relevant. Do they think they can hurt me? We definitely need to get these mechs properly outfitted, though. There's no doubt about that. So I was under the impression that the reason we destroyed this was so that our friendly reinforcements could land. Not sure where our friendly reinforcements are. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take the Raven off over here, break LOS, and we're just going to shoot at this Savannah Master. 
Night Owls are incredibly low, actually. Uh, let's go for their Raven. Yeah, that was fine. I like that. Commando is going to attack the J. Edgar. It's fine. The Vulcan, its goal is actually to make it over here. We're in cover. Excellent. The Ultra AC-5 is jammed currently, but we're going to attack this Raven's side arc. We did not get much done there, but we did take out that shoulder, I suppose. That's something. The AC-5 is unjammed now. Ooh, okay. He got that large laser hit off. Oh, I hate these guys. Indeed. Receiving you. Okay, we are going to make our way in over here with the assassin. Now we can't actually quite make it in this turn. I would prefer that we just get in close enough to be able to make it in next turn with, with a little bit more freedom of which way we're facing. Yep. Okay, the hunchy is just going to Honestly, stay put. Light up this commando's side arc. This is strong side. It would overheat us. I'm not going to fire the small laser and this medium laser. That's still an overheat. These two medium lasers. So we're going to hit this guy weak side. This is going to be frontal armor that we're taking out, but that's okay. Ugh. That didn't go super well. Oh well. Our artillery beacon will be going down momentarily. And then we're going to need to withdraw. Ready okay, the J. Off. Edgar is going to move somewhere over here. This is rear arc on the commando. Aye, aye. So we're going to move over there. And we're just going to light this guy up. Rear arc. Or we're going to miss everything. Okay, that works too. <laughs> You don't say. They're going to work on the Hunchy as best they can. It's not very good that they can work on the Hunchy. Or not very well, rather. Okay. And more missiles coming in on the Hunchy. The Hunchy is fine for now. I'm under heavy fire here. Yeah, I'm aware. The Ultralight Carrier also sending missiles in over there, but that's not much for damage. My armor's melting off. Oh, you're fine. The Ignis moving in, attacking the J. Edgar. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Yes, I know. Our, we're, we're about there. We've deployed this one, and all we need to do now is use the Assassin to get to this target zone. So the Vulcan is going to step in behind the Raven here. And we're going to kick him. And our hit odds on the Ultra AC-5 are incredibly low, but that's okay. We're going to go for it. Acknowledged. Locked on for physical attack. Ooh, we had a 60% chance on that. Feels bad. That's okay. These first ones are always a little bit tough. We got some damage down on him, so that's good. Let's just sprint up to here. On my way. Double time. And we will take a pot shot at this mantis. Yeah, I didn't expect much there. So there's our beacons ready to go. Commando is going to fire on the J. Edgar. That fire damage is going to suck a little bit, but we should be okay. The Raven is going to back off for right now. Location confirmed. And we are just going to fire on the commando. I come. No hits. Fine. Negative. We definitely need to uh, get some better armaments Order. going on. Now we're going to get flames pretty much no matter what, but we can bring the J. Edgar back around over here. Let's and so we shall. And we'll see about lighting this guy up rear arc again. <laughs> we'll fail lighting him up, him up rear arc, more like. Yeah, that's, that's fine. 
Okay, well, we're about to get this last beacon in place. We're ECM jammed. That's a lot of small lasers. Okay. Noted. Systems holding. I mean, we missed our melee attack, so what can I expect? Honestly. Now, we are in a position where we can definitely light this guy up, and we are going to do that. This is strong side on this commando, but his strong side, not all that strong. Copy that. What strong side? <laughs> Dead commando. My heat sinks can't take much more Fantastic. Savannah Master moves up, fires on the assassin, fails. Okay. LRM carrier fires on the J. Edgar, misses everything. Great. Ignis moves over, does nothing. Hunter moves over, fires on the Hunchy. A little bit of damage, a structure exposure. Where is that structure exposed at? I don't know. We're about to find out. Oh, they don't like me at all. But there's our beacons. Okay. Let's get out of here. Impact in two rounds? Where is evac point? This is the evac point? Fine. What do you need? Okay, the raven is... Kinda screwed. We have to go down over this way. Yikes. Okay, we'll position here for right now. And... Oh, the Raven does have ECM. Okay. Let's see. Who do we want to fire on? Ideally, would be this Raven. And that's going to be who we're going to go for. That was a lot of hits, actually. I'll happily take that. So that's the danger zone there. Impact is in two rounds. This is going to be interesting. The Mantis moves over. Orders. Okay, the Vulcan is out of the impact zone. I kind of... Yeah, I, th I think we can get away with, with Rear Arc attacking this Raven here. We have a 95% hit chance. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, SRM-6 crit. We'll take that. Yeah, this guy's real close to dead. They're going to fire on the assassin. They're not going to do much. The assassin is kind of on the wrong side of town. That was pretty much always going to happen. But we need to get out of here. Savannah Master moves over to here. The assassin is going to perhaps move up over this way. This is a rear arc on a lot of vehicles. All we've got is a medium laser SRM-2. We're just going to make for the evac point. Okay, their Mantis moves up. Fires on the J. Edgar. Misses everything. As expected. Excellent. Standing by. The hunchback is also going to have to go down the same direction. Like we're gonna we're because of the evac point, we're forced to fight through here. Which is super awkward for us, actually. Like super awkward for us. Just checking hit odds. And the answer is they're rather mediocre. We're actually best off to attack this scorpion. But I'm not going to fire two medium lasers so that we sink some heat. Aye, aye. Engaging yeah, we missed everything. I'm not surprised. Like, at this point, we pretty much have to see how much damage the bombardment does, right? Waiting for order. We're going to take the J. Edgar in over this way. Yeah, I like here. This position is good. We're going to face this way. In 
And we're going to fire rear arc on this raven. And hopefully do some real damage to it. We did hit with the laser. We got a heat sink crit there. Solid connection on that one. Not as much as I was hoping for though. The raven is positioning there. That's fine. I hate these guys. Okay, the Ignis moves up, fires on the Hunchy. Actually, it hits, hits a Flamer at that range. That's a lot. Okay. Internal structure damage. I don't suppose the Hunchy has jump jets. I don't believe it does. Reporting internal damage. Yep, I'm aware. They're going to keep doing it. Losing lots of armor. Yep. Well, that missed everything. Okay. We'll take it. Ah, oh, man. They're really hammering the hunchy right now. That was a nasty hit. Warning. Incoming artillery fire. Oh, I'm aware. The artillery fire was the point. Okay, we're going to position the Raven here, I guess. Move order received. And go for... Who exactly? Like, they have so many vehicles right now. There's so many options, and none of them are good. I think we're going to go for the Savannah Master here. A couple of solid hits will kill that Savannah Master. It is in fire as well. We need to pull the Hunchback off of the ridge, though. There's no doubt about that. So I would love to hit the Raven from a different flank than this. But this is the one that we're going to go for. It's the only one available. Position confirmed. We just have to fight our way through this. Okay, that's the Raven dead. Enemy down. Excellent. Okay, so this is definitely turning out to be a long episode. That's okay. They didn't do much there. I want to come in over here and fire rear arc on this Savannah Master, ideally. If that laser hits, it dies, but nope, no laser hit. I'm not surprised. We need this artillery impact to happen. The real question I have is, are they going to move out of it? I don't know. Aye, aye. The Hunchy does not, in fact, have jump jets. We're going to back off a little bit here. And maybe we just brace. Our hit odds are quite poor. Yeah, let's just brace. Reduce incoming damage. Could only move the one hex, sadly. I was hoping to pull back a little further. Okay, rear attacking over there. On the Savannah Master. That's fine. Now, the Assassin does have jump jets. Interesting positioning on that Scorpion. Light damage and by that, I mean it's going to get hit by the artillery. Got something you want done? Uh, the J. Edgar could move up over here, in theory. Maybe we should. We have to try to pull out through this area because of the way the map is laid out. Okay, we missed everything. Fair enough. Negative damage. Repeat. Negative damage. We just have to start taking out some of these guys. Okay. We're in cover plus guarded, so that helps. Tremendously, in fact. They're firing on the J. Edgar. They missed almost everything. That's good for us. The Ignis moves up, takes some burn damage, fires on the Assassin, misses everything. Okay. They're firing on the Hunchy. We took a small amount of damage there. I'm under heavy fire here. I really wish we could get to the evac point. That would be nice, if we could. That said... 
They're going to take some damage. Oof. Reporting critical hit. Well, there's the artillery. So there's two vehicles dead. Now we have three rounds before reinforcements arrive. Enemy reinforcements, to be precise. Receiving you. So we have to make a run for it. The question is, how do we expect the Hunchback to get there? I don't think we can get down this, can we? I'm pretty sure... Yeah, there's no way. The Hunchback can't get down that. That was a lot of hits for four evasive pips. I'm getting blown apart out here. I'm here. Well, the Raven can move up to here. And just, like, pot shot one of these. Like, say, the Mantis. That did a lot of damage, but... I really wish those reinforcements that we had been promised by taking out the, uh... Anti-air weapons would have shown up. That <laughs> sure would have been nice. That's, again, a lot of hits for four evasive pips. But it was side arc. Was big hit. Big hit. Yep. Commander. Okay. The Vulcan is going to make its way to the evac zone as well. AC-5 unjammed. The J. Edgar is going to head over here. And we're just going to pot shot this Mantis with the medium laser. Target confirmed. Yep. No joy on that one. That's fine. Missed. I'm here. But the question is... How on earth is the Hunchback supposed to get out of there? This is the right arm. So we're turning left arm here. And rear arc is more armored than our CT. But not by much. We can sprint over to here. And then Vigilance. And that's probably the best we can do right now. And just attempt to withdraw. Luckily, they did lose two vehicles, but there's still roughly a million of them. Watch the flank. Yep, the Savannah Master is going to attack the Assassin. That's fine. They are flanking. Yep. I'm okay with them attacking the Assassin right now. Especially in that rear arc. That's what I'm less okay with right there. Please don't. Every time that happens, we're risking an engine crit. Crap, that shot went internal. Oh, yeah. That shot. Oh. That clustering was unlucky. Wow. Okay. So we're probably going to have to eject the Hunchy. Oh, the Hunchy. Wait a second. We're drunkard. That's not supposed to happen. Our pilot trade is supposed to prevent that. Regardless, I was probably going to eject the Hunchy anyway. The other mechs can get out of there, but the Hunchy was always going to be super exposed taking that route. We just kind of got screwed by the evac zone. Because the assassin is fast enough to get over here. The Hunchy was not. So, I mean, kind of bad luck there, but... That was bad luck. They hit with all those small lasers again on four evasive pips. It was in that arm, though. There wasn't really anything in the arm. So I'm okay with it. Let's get out of here. So yeah, I mean, we took some damage. We expected that. These mechs are not super well set up, and uh, this is a skull and a half mission. I'm not surprised by anything really that's happening here. Like, on a macro level. On a micro level, some of these things that are happening is really bad luck, but... To some degree, not so much. Like, I expected this to go quasi-poorly. And ultimately, just getting out of here with all of these things put together... Oh, that was bad luck. 
That was real bad luck. Oh, wow. Yeah. That large laser hit from way back there with four evasive pips and occluded LOS. That was really bad luck. <laughs> That's okay. We're out of here next round. Repairing the assassin is going to be interesting. Repairing the hunchback isn't going to be too bad. But let's get out of here. We didn't get the reinforcements we were supposed to get. We didn't get our... Like, our, our evac point was super awkward. And they had some really good rolls. All in all, that went about as well as could be expected, honestly. So, I'm okay with it. Our payout is... We're, we're going to be going backwards on that, for sure. But uh, we can we can now start to work on getting some of these things put together. That's some nice SRM6s. I'm going to grab a couple of them. Maybe even all four of them. There's this comm suite. There's an engine core 155. I don't think we're going to grab that. Ferrofibrous armor, on the other hand. I think we'll absolutely grab that. And everything else here, we can roulette. Okay, got some mech parts, a pair of machine guns, all four SRMs, some generic armor. We're not going to sell anything just now. Some generic structure, AC2 ammo, LK SRM ammo though. I like it. Okay, so now we can actually set up our mechs in a kind of sensible manner <laughs> that will make that sort of thing not happen. Now, if we had had an additional mech, if we were indeed able to drop a mech, I suspect, again, that that was a vehicle-only slot. But if we were able to drop another mech, would that have changed anything? I don't think it would have changed things that dramatically. Yeah, 540k. Go ahead and do it, Yang. However, I want to stop repairs on the Hunchy. On the Hunchy. There we go. And also on the assassin. Okay. Everything else is fine to just auto repair, including especially the vehicles. So let's go ahead and refit this hunchy. Now we didn't lose this torso, which is lucky. We can repair everything here and we end up losing roughly a million heat sinks, which is not great to be sure. We can put on one heatsink in compensation. We can max out this armor, which we will absolutely do. We can downgrade this medium laser down to... Actually, we can't. What am I talking about? Let's see. We have a support hardpoint. Not that useful. Okay. That's fine. We can put the comm suite in this guy if we wanted to. I'm not sure how useful that truly is, though. So we can put in one heatsink... And we can't really max out this hunchy. So for now, this is the best we can do. We're going to have to put more heat sinks into this, but that's fine. Now for the assassin, we are absolutely going to do some work here. Now, our engine was destroyed, which means that we're going to need to put in a new engine core. And we don't have an engine core. So we're not going to repair the assassin just yet. We'll just keep that over there, and we'll repair that once we get an engine core. The Hunchy is going to take 36 days. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. What kind of mission difficulty is there here? Too high. Fine. In that case, let's see if we can go somewhere easier. Skull and a half? I'll pass. Let's just go somewhere on our own dime. So where do we want to go? Well, this is Federated Suns over here, so that's great. Now, I want... Ooh, that's a one sculler. Is there a half skull around here? That's a one skull. There's a half skull. Federated Suns half skull. Let's do it. That'll take us 26 days to get there. Now, we're going to get a financial report here. Our finances are going to start looking sketchy. That is normal, of course, at the beginning of a Rogue Tech campaign. I'm not too concerned. We're just going to head on over 
And in the meantime, let's do a little bit of training if we can. We can't. Naturally. Our mech warriors are not unfatigued yet. <laughs> okay, so we're going to head on over there. Our refit harness is now complete. I want to get this super cheap structural repair started while we're traveling. Excellent. And with that, it is well past time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to start work on getting our mechs put back together. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I'll see you all next time when we uh, <laughs> hopefully lose fewer mechs. See you all then.